Um, experience is clearly a hugely valuable thing, and it's, it's you know, one of the main reasons you have a board, one of the main reasons mm -hmm. you bring on board senior leaders. Um, but I guess, uh, do you have any tips? So what I was going to ask you is, do you have any tips for hiring people who uh, aren't just going to regurgitate that experience? But I'm not sure that's really the question. What I really want to ask is to clarify what you meant. Do you mean to say that actually somebody who does just regurgitate their experience actually adds value? Because for the nine things they say that are irrelevant, the tenth thing might save you, you know, or make you a huge amount of money. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of reasons for getting non-execs on your board. I mean, experience is one of them, connections is one of them, there's lots of reasons for doing it. <clears throat> it depends on the experience you're buying. So if you're buying experience from, a, from a, a huge multinational bank, you know what you're getting yourself into from that particular experience. They're going to tell you about process and governance and all those sorts of things. You kind of know what you're going to get. It depends on the experience you really, truly think you need. So again, what situation, where, where's your business? Where's your business in the world that you're in? What, what sort of stage are you in, would you say? We're, we're definitely, sorry, we're definitely in the sort of scale-up phase okay. at the moment. So we're about 450 people. We're way beyond startup yeah. at this point. So then it depends what your biggest challenges are there. So if it's hiring and retaining staff, that's somebody you need some support with on the board. If it's somebody who's, again, experienced as a, a previous founder who's got experience in high growth, again, that's useful, something useful to have on the board. Mm. Probably people who are not so useful on the board at this stage are executives of large financial institutions because they can't, typically in high growth organisations, they really can't cope with the breakneck speeds of what you need to be doing and how you need to be doing it. And they can, they don't know that, but they can end up freaking out a little bit. What's interesting about folks like high um, C-suite folks of banks, they're really great at early stage seed round style or early stage startups because they're great on paper for your investors to go, oh, look, so-and-so from bank is on the board. They're extremely useful for that. But then again, they can hold you back when you're in hyper growth because they don't, they've never been there through that before. Most people haven't been. It's mm. very unusual to find somebody who's been through a hyper growth company in the management team. So it's understanding what you need at that point from those people and understanding how you're going to get it from them and the right sorts of people to have there and understanding if somebody's not been in that situation before, taking their advice with a pinch of salt. 